Your lack of confidence is slowing you down, holding you back, and keeping you stuck. If you're ready to level up your confidence, reinvent yourself, and become unrecognizable, I'm so glad that you found this episode. If you're ready to get started, I need for you to get your ambition planner, your pen, your post-it, and let's go. Hello, Ambition Babes. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion, also known as the face of ambition across all social media platforms. I am so glad that you have found this space, honey, because I help women that are 40 years and older who are ready to be able to reinvent themselves, level up their confidence and prioritize self-care. And let me tell you, honey, if you're not quite 40 and you were looking for an auntie, a big sister, a best friend, you're also welcome in this space, babe, because this episode is about building your confidence. Somewhere along the way, something has happened that made you lack confidence. You started doubting yourself. You started feeling anxious and overwhelmed about everything that was going on in life. And it started to dim your light. And today I really want to walk you back through what happened in your past that made you stop believing in yourself, that made you start doubting who you were, that made you not feel as pretty and as attractive and as confident as the woman that God intended you to be. I'm going to give you some practical steps that are going to help you straighten your crown and be the confident woman that God intended for you to be. So today I'm going to start our episode just a little backwards. Normally I hold out the homework until the end, but today I'm actually going to start with your assignment because the way that you find and rebuild your confidence is to remember who you are. Sometimes we forget along this journey just how amazing, how dope, how sensational, how special you really are. And what we never do is take time and write out what makes us special. We never take time to remember like I have proof of power. Like I am not just saying that I'm dope. I know I am. Look at the things that I've accomplished. Look at all the dreams and the goals that I set for my myself that I was able to achieve is I want you to close your eyes. And while your eyes are closed, I want you to think about the little girl, you, standing in front of you. And I want you to imagine the age that she lost her confidence. Was she eight, 10? Was she in the ninth grade? I want you to think about your younger self standing in front of you right now. That moment that you can remember where her confidence got a little shaken. And while she's standing in front of you, I want you to imagine that she's beginning to cry because she doesn't have the confidence that she needs to do whatever it is that she dreams of doing, that she dreams of being. Somebody made her feel bad. Someone talked about her. Someone made her feel less than the person that God intended for her to be. Maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was a bully. Maybe it was a boy that she liked. And what I want you to do is speak to that little girl and say, no, don't cry. Let me show you all of the amazing things that you're going to do in your life. I'm going to show you everything that you're going to achieve. I'm going to show you the things that you're going to experience. I'm going to show you the things that are going to make you laugh. Some of the failures that you're going to experience that you're going to learn from. I'm going to show you that scar that you're going to get that's going to make you stronger. When you start telling the little girl all of the things that she's going to have, she starts to smile and you want to keep that smile beaming. So you start really thinking about all of the things that you've been able to accomplish. You've graduated from school. You've started your dream job. Look at the car that we're going to have in our future. Little girl, don't cry. We're going to be okay. And as you slowly open your eyes, I want you to take that same idea, that same little girl that you just imagined in your mind, and I want you to write a letter to her. I want you to write out those exact things that you were able to achieve, the things that you've overcome, the things that you've been able to do. I want you to write them down because that little girl needs the confidence that you actually have inside of you right now. Somewhere you've lost confidence, somewhere someone's stolen that from you. But today I'm going to challenge you to find that inner adult who lost their confidence. What happened that drained the confidence from you? Did you never regain it from that little girl or did it happen just recently whenever you got fired from that job or when your husband told you he didn't want to be married to you anymore or when you gained 15 pounds and couldn't fit into your favorite jeans any longer? What happened that made you feel like I'm not pretty, I'm not worthy, I'm not educated enough, I'm not successful as they are. What happened in those moments? What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the four areas where we tend to lack confidence. I'm going to give you actionable tips, some of which that you can start today and some that are going to be long-term tasks that you're going to have to develop over time in these four areas. Listen, honey, what I know for sure is that this is not a short-term fix. This is not like, oh, you can just do this today and you can be fantastic by tomorrow. These things are going to take a lifetime to be able to fix. There are so many times between that little girl and who you are today that has been wounded 
wounded, that has been talked about, that has been disrespected. And it's time to rebuild yourself. Nobody can build your internal or external confidence but you. But today I'm going to give you some of the tips that are going to be able to help you start as soon as today. So area number one where you may lack a little confidence is in your body and appearance. Let me tell you what I know. The moment that you step on the scale and it doesn't tell you what you want to see, you're going to be mad. And it's probably going to set you in a mood for the rest of the day. Why? Because oftentimes we attach our confidence and what we look like and how good we feel to the number that appears on the scale. Sometimes our confidence is buried in our hips and our booty and our shape. And when those things start to sag and get wrinkles and get stretch marks on them, we start to feel like we're not as attractive as desirable or like we're losing it. Girl, I know what it feels like to be getting a little bit older and you can't shake it like you used to. And the moment that that happens, it starts to breed insecurities. You start to feel like, you know what? I don't have it anymore. I can no longer wear shorts. I can't actually wear that bathing suit anymore. Why am I wearing such loud pink lipstick? Because these, it, all it does is make these wrinkles around my mouth show a little bit more. You know what? I don't want to work in that capacity any longer because I don't feel like I want to be out front and in front of individuals. When you feel insecure, it starts to slowly dim your light. You start believing the things that everyone says that you should be. You start thinking that you're supposed to look like this other person or you're supposed to still have abs at 45 like that girl that you saw on Instagram. You start feeling like, you know what, just because I don't wear a size 10 or I can't fit the clothes in the kids section like I used to, that it's all over for me. Like something's wrong with me because things are changing, because your body is changing, because you've developed differently. Now that you've gotten just a little bit older, you're starting to not feel your very best. But here's the internal work that I'm going to challenge you to do. I want you to answer each of those questions and identify if they're true. Is it true that you're no longer beautiful? No. Is it true that you can still wear beautiful bright red lipstick if you care to? Yeah. Is it true that you're aging gracefully and it's an honor to reach another milestone birthday? Yeah. When you start really looking at the things that you say to be able to degrade yourself and put yourself down, when you start answering those questions of, is it actually true? Is my body ugly? Do I have roles perhaps? But does that make me ugly? No. Does it mean that my body has carried a child? Does it mean that I have had scars and bruises and situationships? I've gained weight. I've lost weight. Is that what that actually proves? Yes. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are created just a little below the angels. And so do you actually believe that God put us on this earth to actually think that we're ugly, unattractive, unsexy? something that is undesirable and should be unappreciated by ourselves and others? Absolutely not. So I'm going to offer you some short-term tips that you can do as soon as today to be able to level up your body and appearance confidence. You have got to start practicing self-compassion. It's just as easy as starting each morning with body positive affirmations and looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, you know what, there may be some things that I don't like, but what are the things that I absolutely love about myself? I have beautiful feet. I have strong, beautiful hair. Absolutely love my smile. I love these stretch marks right here because it reminds me of the time that I had my first child. I absolutely love the fact that when I put lotion on my legs, my melanin just be popping. I mean, look at your body and think about the things that you love about your body. Repeat those things every single day. Everybody spends time with their bodies at some point whenever they're taking a shower, or getting dressed, putting on their makeup. This is the time to really reflect on the things that you love about your body and thank God for the second way in the short term that you can increase your confidence is dress with confidence. Now listen, honey, I love Shein just like the next girl, but sometimes in shorts, it's just a little too short. I'm not saying just because you're confident in your body that you need to show everybody your body. I'm talking about dress like a grown woman. I'm talking about wearing the type of confidence that make other individuals want exactly what you have. I'm talking about the confidence that makes you feel like, you know what, when I get dressed, I know I look good. I want you to think about what you're putting on your body every day and how it increases your confidence. And look, maybe I'm just hating on Shein shorts because my thighs be rubbing and I can't really get in them. But baby, if you can get on them, rock them, honey. If they look good on you, then wear them. Dress in a way that makes you feel confident. Not that fake confidence where it's like, I'm going to put on this because I can wear whatever I want. I'm going to let it all hang out. I'm talking about that confidence that makes you feel like that girl. That makes you feel like a grown woman. That lets other individuals know that you're sexy with a lot of clothes on or just a little bit. Whatever makes you feel confident, that's what I want you to do, but I want you to dress like that every single day. I'm not going to say that you can't wear your bonnet to the grocery store. I'm not even going to pick that argument, but if that doesn't make you feel confident, then take it off. If it makes you feel more confident to get your nails done or to get a wax or to wear a nice blazer, do it. The third way that you can level up your body confidence 
starting today is to get physically active. Maybe there's something about a little sweat on the top of your lip that makes you feel like you're doing something. Start moving your body. If you want to start feeling like your best and highest self, there's something about dedicating yourself to the process of just walking, going to lift some weights, doing a body pump class. Do they still offer a lot of body pump? Is a body combat now? <laughs> doing a class, of course, going swimming, doing Pilates, do something that makes you put on some really cute gym clothes. Go and move your body. When I tell you drinking your water, eating a good salad. Moving your body is one of the fundamental building blocks to increasing your confidence. A long-term practice that you can embrace in order to build your body confidence is to adapt a healthy lifestyle. As someone who has lost weight, gained weight, lost it again, and now is up seven pounds over the summer, I'm going to tell you what I know. It has got to be a lifestyle. If you want to be able to be confident about your body, doing this yo-yo of like being where you want it to be, being on a good trajectory, and then slipping back down on that scale is going to do nothing but hurt your confidence. If you start adapting working out, eating right, moving your body, drinking your water as a lifestyle, you're going to find that your confidence stays on a 10. The second long-term method that you can do is to adapt a daytime and nighttime skincare routine. Whenever you say, you know what, it's 10 o'clock, it's time for me to go to my room, it's time for me to wash my face, use all of my facial products, maybe do a steaming bath, you know, prep my hair for the next day, I'm going to floss, I'm going to water floss, I'm going to brush my teeth, I'm going to use my whitening strips. Something about that routine just makes you feel like, you know what, I'm going to put on my good pajamas, I'm going to read my good book, I don't want to look at Instagram tonight, I want to be able to just support into me. Having an amazing morning and evening routine will help level up your confidence in absolutely no time. The second area where we lack confidence is in our relationships and social interactions. I'm not going to lie to you. There's a lot of uncertainty whenever you're trying to navigate a friendship and a relationship, the relationship with your mom or with your sister, whenever things have gone bad in the past and you're like, are we good? Best friend from high school. Like, I know we've been friends a long time, but I haven't really caught up with you. Or I, I feel like you're mad at me or I feel like we don't spend as much time together. So you start lacking confidence in the relationships that you have. And there are so many things that go on inside of relationships that we have that can really hurt our confidence. Oh, you thought that having a lack of confidence was just how you felt with like your body and your image and how you appeared to other individuals? Absolutely not. We can actually start lacking confidence in the relationships that we have that can make us feel really tense and anxious. If you have social anxiety, if you feel completely overwhelmed when you're around crowds, if you feel like you have to go outside and completely fake it, like I'm happy, I'm good, this doesn't make me anxious, everything is great. Whenever you walk outside because of whatever you're job is or your occupation or the way that you feel about yourself, it can really start weighing on you. Whenever you have to fake it every single time that you leave the house, there can be such a high level of uncertainty whenever you're trying to navigate your relationships, be that your marriage, your partnership, your friendships, your social circles. It's really difficult to understand where you are and what your place is, and it can really weigh on your confidence. Whenever you thought you were the best friend, but you hear your best friend call somebody else their best friend, you're like, hold on wait a minute. <laughs> I thought that was us. I thought this was you and me. I thought we was me and you must never part. And I see now you're with somebody else. That really can hurt and play on your confidence. Believe it or not, our relationships and social interactions can hurt our confidence faster than any stretch mark could because we want to be loved. We want to be appreciated. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be that person that's closest to that other individual. We want that bond. Like you've probably heard me say before, we were never intended to do this alone. And the moment that your relationships feel as if they're waning or not as strong as they used to be, you start feeling insecure about your place in that relationship. One of the ways that you can start leveling up your confidence in your relationships is to rekindle old connections. Have you ever considered the fact that perhaps it's you, like you're the reason why you don't have any friends, like you're the reason that people don't talk to you anymore, that maybe you're too busy or you always seem like you have something else to do or every time they invite you out, you're not available. Perhaps it's time to rekindle those old friendships that you find that are very valuable and mean something to your life and reach out to them and apologize for the things that you know that you've done or the things that you don't even know that you've done. Reaching back out to individuals, even if it's in person or on social media, can make you feel far more connected and it can really help build your confidence in saying that, you know what, I'm going to be the first one to extend communication. I'm going to be the first one. I'm going to be the bigger person to say I'm sorry for the way that things ended. No, it may not rebuild or repair that relationship, but when I tell you it's going to do an amazing thing for your confidence because you're going to say, I know that I'm a good person. I know that I'm a good 
good friend. I know that maybe I've done something wrong or I've not been the very best or I have a lot of social anxieties and I have pulled back from other individuals. Just being able to reconnect with individuals that are in your past or, or maybe even in your present just makes you feel more connected and confident. If you're ready to level up your confidence in relationships, then be available. Invite your friends out for brunch. Reconnect with the individuals that you really care about. Apologize to that friend that you did something wrong and you know what you did and you know what you said. Go ahead and apologize to her and make it right. If you want to be able to level up your confidence in your relationships, sometimes you have to put yourself out there. Sometimes you're going to have to not be who you have always been in situations and change it. If you want to be able to go to brunch and have that girlfriend trip and be able to talk to your friends endlessly on the phone, then sometimes you're going to have to take the initiative. And I know it can feel uncomfortable. And I know that sometimes we get socially insecure about putting ourselves out there in certain relationships. If the relationship is worth it and you're ready to build your confidence and creating new connections and being able to meet new people, this is the number one space to start. The next short-term way that you can increase your confidence in your relationships and social interactions is to set some healthy boundaries. Oh girl, you should have seen it coming because you know I love me some boundaries. Relationships need boundaries as well because whenever you start lacking confidence in your relationships, it's probably because you did not have boundaries in them. I remember there was a time in my life where I felt like I had to pay to have friends. Like when we went to brunch, when we went to lunch, I was always sliding my card over and making sure like, oh girl, I got it. No problem, no problem because I wanted friends. I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be able to have that connection with somebody so bad that I was willing to cross my own financial boundaries in order to have them. I always tell you all, I'm not telling you something that I read in the book. I'm telling you something that I know. And so what do you think happened when I was no longer able to pay for the bottomless mimosas and the brunch cruises with all of my girlfriends? My confidence waned. I felt like, oh, they're not going to like me anymore. Or I wonder if they thought that I invited them to come because I was going to pay. And I started feeling so unconfident about every single thing. I started second guessing my relationships. I started feeling like, are they only around me because of the things that I give them? Or do they actually value me as a friend? Then I started recounting all of the times that I was only calling them and they were never calling me back. And the only time they called me back is when I was like, hey girl, what are you doing this weekend? Let's go down to Miami. And then I started to resent them as friends. And I started feeling like, you know what? Perhaps I am being used. Perhaps I've been sitting here calling this person my friend all along and all they are are users. And even though I don't believe that any of those things are true, it's my lack of boundaries that allowed my mind to go into a tailspin. You know exactly the boundaries that you need to set in your friendship groups. If it is that they can't talk about your man or your mama anymore, if it's that you're not going to pay for everything every time that you go out anymore. If it's that you, they can't call you all times at night with their problems because you're trying to get your rest. You're going to have to set boundaries in your relationships. And I tell you what I know, it's going to increase your friendship confidence. The best thing that you can do to increase your friendship confidence is to be the friend to somebody else that you would want them to be to you. I feel as if this is how it is in almost everything that we do. Whatever you want, you need to be. But what I do know is if you set healthy boundaries in your friendships and relationships, it's going to help you feel more confident as an individual. In the long term, the thing that I feel as if it's going to help you have the most successful relationships. This is in your marriage, in your friendships, with your siblings, with your soul rose, whoever it is, is that you may need to seek counseling. Oh, you guys, I was listening to the most amazing podcast recently and she was a friendship therapist. Friendship therapists exist because sometimes we need therapy to work through our friendships. Just like you have marriage and family and all of these other specialists, sometimes you need to seek professional advice in order to navigate your friendships. Whenever you feel a lack of confidence, you start feeling used, you start feeling neglected, you start comparing yourself to other individuals. It may be time to seek help from a professional. The third area where we can lack confidence is in our career and professional growth. Every time you try to keep up with the Joneses, it levels you down at least 10 pegs. As women of a certain age, there's times that we feel like we should have advanced faster, that we should be further along in our career, that should we, we should be making more money by now, or that we're too old to start a new job or too old to pivot in life, to start our own business, to really pursue that side hustle, to start a tech business, to start a YouTube channel. There are so many areas in our career and professional decisions where we lack confidence. It's the shoulda, coulda, wouldas for me. I should have done this. I should have changed my major. I should have never majored in that. I should have listened to my parents when they told me to get this type of job. I shouldn't have ever sit at this job for too long because I absolutely hate it and I'm never going to move up. I should have taken the promotion wherever they offered it to me, but I was looking at another job at another place and I ended up not getting that job because I didn't have the skills that I needed, but I should have taken that job when I had a chance. I could have played basketball. I could have ran track. I could have got a singing scholarship. I could have studied abroad. I could have moved to another country. I could have moved to another state. I could have should have, I would have done these things so differently. And the thing of it is, is that every time we should have, could have, would have about our career, it just drops our confidence every single time. 
every time we consider the opportunities that we had and things that we could have done or should have done but didn't decide to do it plants a little seed of self-doubt in us that makes us believe that it actually is too late to be able to accomplish so the short-term tip that i have for you is to set small wins that are going to help you reach your goals you guys know how i feel about goals and habit stacking so you shouldn't be surprised that this shows up in this episode as well it's not too late for you to win but you have got to identify what you want and go after it i don't know who told you that it was too late this is the construct that you've made up in your mind but it's time to change your mindset it's time to in the negative self-talk. It's time to set small intentional goals that are going to help you to be able to achieve your overall career goals. If this is something that you struggle with, I want you to do two small things for me. One, I want you to update your resume. And two, I want you to attend a workshop or a seminar. These are two very small goals that you could do this week. It makes you feel like, you know what, when the job opportunity shows up, when the position is posted, I'm going to be ready with my updated resume to apply. And I'm going to have just taken a workshop on the exact same thing that I'm applying for. So I feel ready for the interview when they call me. When when they call me. Y'all like that positive self-talk? The second thing that you can do in order to increase your confidence whenever it comes to your career and personal growth is to seek feedback. One of my really good friends said the other day that she was listening to someone that had attended a workshop that she did and the person had such amazing feedback for her. She felt absolutely amazing listening to the things that she took from the workshop and how it made her feel, some of the notes that she had taken that she was going to implement, some of the constructive feedback that she wanted to be able to offer her. It made her feel absolutely amazing. What if she never asked for that feedback? What if she was too nervous to say, I really want to know what you're thinking? You guys, sometimes we do it to ourselves. Sometimes we could actually increase our confidence by just asking a person, how did I do? How do I look? What could I do better? What are some of the skills and the things that I need to be able to acquire that's going to help me to be able to get to the next level? You are going to be surprised at some of their answers because sometimes it's absolutely nothing. And here you are sitting at your desk eating your peanut butter and jelly sandwich feeling like you're going to be stuck in the cubicle forever. Whenever somebody actually has their eye on you for that next promotion, someone is looking at your IG right now wanting you to do that celebrity's hair, makeup, or nails. Sometimes we have not because we ask not. And you know what? Scratch that. We don't have because we don't ask. We don't know what people think. We don't know how good a job we're doing. We don't know how to be able to advance because we're too scared to ask. One way that I know is going to increase your confidence is to ask for constructive feedback. This way you'll know where you are and the direction in which to go to be able to level up. One of the long-term tips that I would like to offer you is to get a coach or a mentor. As a business and accountability coach, I take my job extremely seriously. I know that anyone that comes to me for this service is going to need to be affirmed. They're going to need to feel appreciated. They're going to need to know that their ideas are amazing. And as a coach and as a mentor, it's my job to pour into you to increase your confidence and offer you feedback. I am extremely biased whenever it comes to having a coach or a mentor because I believe it is the fastest way to be able to get to some of your goals. But what I know is that having a coach, having somebody cheering for you, having somebody rooting for you in your corner, telling you that you can when sometimes you feel as if you cannot is one long-term way to be able to increase your confidence. And lastly, one of the areas where we can lack a lot of confidence is in our finances. Honey, when you ain't got the bag, you know it. And it can make you feel like, what am I doing? Like, why am I not making more? Why am I not able to have the things that they have? Why is it that I'm not advancing as fast or people don't value the things that I have to offer? This is what I'm going to tell you about finances. And I want you to listen very clearly. I know that the enemy would love for you to lack financial confidence, because if you lack financial confidence, you'll start blaming God for your lack of abundance. If you start blaming God for your lack of abundance, you'll stop believing in him. Stop having faith. You'll stop tithing. You'll start robbing Peter to pay Paul. I want you to consider the areas where you lack financial confidence. And this is the thing that I want you to take to God. This is the area that I want you to say, you know what, God, I'm looking at everybody else around me and I feel like it's not fair that I don't have what they have. I can't go on the Mediterranean cruise with the rest of my friends. I can't buy the brand new BMW like my homegirl. Heck, I can't even buy the new Fenty gloss whenever it drops. And that's been keeping me in my feelings. The man that created you knows exactly what you need. And so if you lack financial confidence, the short term solution that I want to offer you is to give it to God in prayer. And I mean, I want you to get specific. If you have a certain amount of debt that you're ready to get off of your back, if you have a certain number that you want to make before the end of the year, if you have a financial goal that you want to be able to reach to show your kids or to be able to provide better for your family or just to take a trip. I want you to give it to God in prayer. He cares, he knows, and he will be able to give you the desires of your heart. Like I said earlier, we have not because we ask not. Our financial insecurities can sometimes be solved by just being honest with ourselves and saying, I overspend. I've mismanaged 
manage my finances and now I can't put my kids through school the way that I planned on it. There are so many areas where we battle insecurities with our finances that we're really going to have to come to terms with and say, you know what? I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made. I'm sorry for the things that I did that I knew I shouldn't have done. And I'm ready to make it right today. You guys know how I feel about the word budgeting, but this is the time to actually say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to download Dion's free budget plan. I'm actually going to start writing out all of my bills and the debt that I want to retire. I'm going to actually give a faithful tithe and I'm going to test God at his word. I'm actually going to set money aside for the experiences that I want to have. I'm going to get serious about my money and I'm going to start looking at my bank account every day and I'm going to thank God for whatever number shows up whenever I open that app. I saved financial insecurities for last because so many of us deal with insecurities when it comes to money. Money is not bad, but when we have not educated ourselves how to use it and how to spend it to help us make more money, it can feel like all it does is just fall through your fingertips every single time. So another short-term tip that I want to offer you is to educate yourself on your finances. When you open that app and you look at your savings account and all the money that's in there is the amount that it takes to keep the account open, I want you to start educating yourself on what type of savings account is it? How can I get an interest bearing account? How much should I be saving of my check every single month in order to reach X amount of number? Do I need a financial advisor? Do I need a wealth manager? Am I Should I be investing my money? If I should be, where should I be investing my money? Right now you've invested your money in late night shopping on Amazon, but now I want you to forgive yourself for the decisions that you've made in your past and become confident about how you use your money in the future. Now I want to tell you all up front, I am not a financial advisor, but one of the long-term tips that I will offer you is to get you one. Having a financial advisor will be able to help you to create a comprehensive plan that is tailored specifically for your goals. If you want to feel like a boss, schedule in that you need to meet with your financial advisor every Friday at 2 p.m. Circling that twice on your calendar increases your confidence tenfold. Ladies, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. I know that confidence is something that all of us struggle with. Sometimes we have it and sometimes we lose it. What I want to challenge you to be able to do during this reinvention journey is to get unstuck in the area of your confidence. If you want to be able to feel absolutely unstoppable, become the woman of your dreams, to be able to reach your goals, to be able to become unrecognizable, you're going to have to identify the areas where you lack confidence and work on that area every single day. I cannot wait to meet you in the comment section of this episode because I want to know the areas in which you've lacked confidence and some of the things that you've done to be able to level up. Our comment section is a sacred space where we're rooting for each other, praying for each other, and offering advice and affirming each other on our glow up journey. So if that's not your intent, stay out of our comment section, sis. I want to thank you guys again for watching this episode. If you have not yet subscribed, please make sure that you hit the subscription bell. Make sure that you follow me on all social media platforms. And I pray that you are well and that you are doing something every single day to reach your most ambitious goals.